All right, you should have out lecture notes uh, for lecture 22, mean and standard deviation of a random variable. So our context is we have a dis discrete random variable for now, and its probability distribution, which is just a chart listing the possible values of the random variable and the corresponding probabilities. Right? And I say here, uh, the random variable reminds me of a population. RV, if you think of the random variable as, as um, kind of representing the, the possible numerical outcomes of a random experiment that is performed arbitrarily many times over and over, we can think that the random variable generates a population of data. Okay, so in a very real way, the, the random variable is sort of a, a precursor to the, the uh, to a population of data. But you can turn that around and say, suppose you have, you think of the random variable as maybe the outcome of some random process that generates these numbers. You do it for kind of forever and you get this huge population of numbers. How about turning that around and saying, what if you start with that huge population of numbers and you reach in and randomly pull out a number? Isn't that a random variable? Because you have this set of numbers and you're just reaching and randomly pulling them out. So, so the population kind of reminds me of a random variable. Um, a population of data gives us a random variable. Um, if, if the experiment by, uh, if the experiment is just picking a data point at random. Okay, so there is a, a very real way in which the random variable sort of encapsulates the entire population of data that it could uh, generate. And also the way the, the, the this huge population of data, by just having the experiment be that you reach in and grab a number, it generates a random variable, right? So it's very natural to um, Think of these two things, population of data and the, the corresponding random variable as being sort of parallel. And I say there, if you read that paragraph, um, I, I say that it's natural then to call the expected value of the random variable, which we did last time, its mean, since it was calculated the same way we calculated the mean using a relative frequency chart. So it's very natural to, to talk about the mean mu, in fact, of, of a... Um, of a um, a random variable. And indeed, we can also talk about the random variable's standard deviation, sigma. And I think I just want to, well, okay, yeah. The, we will do an example involving the meaning. And in fact, I'll just redo the example with the um, d tossing a single die. Um, so we'll see that formula again, but let's think about the formula for finding standard deviation. What it really is, is if you recall, what we do is we take each data point minus mu squared, each data point, and we add them all up, and we divide by the number there are, and then we square root. Well, what we're doing is if we add up all the data points minus mu squared, if you remember this from way back, if we add up all of them for the same value, we're actually really taking this, this value xi minus mu squared times the relative frequency. All right, I didn't really emphasize that back when we computed the, the standard deviation of a population of data, but we'll see it now. So the definition, um, the standard deviation, the standard deviation sigma of a random variable x of a discrete random variable x is calculated as follows. The notation we use is sigma, so it's just like the standard deviation for a population, all right? But it turns out that what we do is we take all the different values that x can, can take on, so the different values We subtract mu and square, and then we multiply by what we think of as the relative frequency in the population, which of course is just the population, uh, just the pr a probability, x sub i. So this is if we sum over all the data points 
in the, um, I'm sorry, sorry, all the um, values of the random variable. Okay, so we're summing over all values of, of the random variable. And of course, we have to square root it to finish, all right? So that is the um, standard deviation. The variance, which we should talk about here, and we're going to do an example in a second, of the variance of x, which we just denote as sigma squared, is just this up here, which we can actually write in abbreviated form, summation x minus mu squared times p of x. And this just means summing over all, well, I probably should put in the I equal 1 to n again to indicate, again, it's summing over all values of, of the random variable. I just didn't take the square root, right? That's the key. The variance is uh, the square of the standard deviation, and so we don't um, take the square root. And I think I introduced variance briefly one other time when talking about the variance of a population. Um, uh, we aren't going to use it much in this class, but it'll come up occasionally, so I just want us to have a definition of it. And we will now do an example. where we will calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a random variable. And if you look, you see we're going to do the example where we toss a single fair die. So look at that table, and um, that's the table we're going to be filling out. And I think it'll make sense. If it doesn't make sense right now, it'll make sense when we work through it. Okay, so. Oh, all right, good enough. Let's see here. So our example is we're going to toss a die, and I'm going to put the um, probability distribution chart up there. So we have the different possible values of the random variable, you know, and, and the corresponding probabilities. We've already done this, and in fact, we've already done the third column, right, where we took x times p of x, and we, uh, all, all the way across, and then if we add them up, we got the expected value of x, which if you remember, um, put it right here for now, I think I'm going to have to move it later, the expected value of x, which is what we mean by the mean for x, and um, um, since we are working with a random variable x, it's sometimes a good idea to give the subscript x to the mean you're computing. You could be working with more than one random variable. It's nice to indicate which mean you're looking at or which standard deviation you're looking at. Anyway, mu sub x, we, we got to be 3.5, right? We got to be 3.5. We did all that. All right, so now the next column then, look at what that next column is. It is taking each value of x and subtracting um, the mean from that and squaring it, and then taking it times the probability of that x. So again, I'm going to get each um, each data, uh, sorry, each random variable value minus mu. So I'm going to get the distance between a random variable value and mu, and I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to multiply by the weight of that value, that probability. And again, they're all one sixth, so it's not that interesting. But this is the formula. Okay, so what do we get? Let's do the very first one. The very first one, I'm going to take the data value of, uh, sorry, I keep saying data value, the, the random variable value of 1 right there, and I'm going to subtract 3.5, the mean, and then I parentheses and square that, take it times the probability. That's what that formula says up there, right? And if I do that, I get 6.25 over 6, which I could... If I multiply top and bottom by 4, I get 25 fourths. I could do that, but I just left it as 6.25 over 6 since the denominators are, are naturally 6. So I get 6.25 over 6, and you should work that through and make sure you can get that. And I should have you now pause me and see if you can do the rest of them. All right, so pause and see if you can get the rest, and then we'll go through a couple more at least. Okay, next one. I'm going to take the x value of 2, and I'm going to subtract 3.5, the mean, Square it, take it times 1 sixth, and that gives me 2.25 over 6. All right? If you had a little trouble with that one, now that you got it, pause me and try to do the next one. The next one, I will take the, the random variable value 3, and I will subtract the mean, square it, times 1 sixth. 
and that gives me 0 0.25 over 6. And I can see I'm going to, um, I'm going to need to uh, erase my expected value down here because I think I'm going to run over it. All right. Uh, in fact, I don't think I'm going to do any more. I think we'll just, I think you should have it. You should make sure you can do them all, and uh, there they are. All right. So if you add all that up in the, the right-hand column, you get, um, you get, before we do, add it up, before we square root it, we're actually getting the variance. We're actually getting sigma sub x squared, which I also say is the variance of x, var x, we sometimes say. And that turns out to be, if you add, if you add all these up, you get, um, you get, uh, what do you get? You get 70 over 24, if I remember right. Yes, you get 70 over 24, which, which reduces to 35 over 12. Okay, so that's the variance uh, of x. And so what's the standard deviation? Standard deviation of x is just the square root, 35 over 12, and it's something like, you put in your calculator, 1.7078 or something like that. But, but there you go. There's the uh, standard deviation. Pretty straightforward. Let's do uh, the next example. Let me get rid of all this. All right, and I'll just leave that up there. But um, I'm not going to actually do much of the work. I'm going to leave it to you. So we toss two dice, and this time, so example, toss two dice. And a random variable we'll call x bar. It's the mean, right? You've already gotten the chart for that. You've gotten x bar, p of x bar, right? And you did all that. You've done all that. And I think you also did this, didn't you? Maybe you didn't do this. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. This is a good time to stop. Let's compute the mean, which is the expected value of x bar. And no, we did do this because it turns out to be seven. I uh, know it turns out to be seven if you're adding them, and it turns out to be. You should go through and see that it turns out to be 3.5. Again, same mean as as for one die. I believe we did that. So anyway, we get that. Um, mu sub x bar is 3.5. All right, you should do, you know, again, I'm, I'm blowing through this, but of course you should be pausing me and seeing if you can work it through. Look at the example we just did and, and um, work through this. It takes a little bit more work because you have, um, um, what, 11 values or whatever. Um, so, uh, but, but this should be x bar minus mu squared times p of x bar. And so what's the first one going to be? The very first possible value of x bar was still 1 minus 3.5 squared. And the probability of that was 1 over 36, wasn't it? And um, I'm just going to say, et cetera, et cetera. And when you add all those up, you get uh, 35 over 24. So we get that the variance of, of x bar, which we can also denote as sigma squared x bar, is 35 over 24. And so the standard deviation of x bar then is the square root of 35 over 24. All right, so I hope you work through all that and to make sure you can get that on your own. Let's stop here.